The reason why I wanted to have you on today is I heard an interview with you uh, talking about HBO's Chernobyl. Now, I watched that thing and like a dope uh, took it to be, I mean, how could they possibly say, no, 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 there there are some things that we changed and there are some things that aren't exactly right, uh, but it's really only like that one scientist represents a group of scientists. No, when I'm listening to you, Almost everything that I saw was not right in Chernobyl, anything that counted. Can you take us through this? Yeah, I mean, it's a very terrifying show. I think it's understandable that anybody would watch it would be anti-nuclear by the end of it. And what was so galling about it is that the creator of it and HBO repeatedly claimed that it was based on science, based on facts and that they only embellished some kind of character details, things that were right. really unimportant. Well, so, and I was honestly, <laughs> I've written so much on Chernobyl because Chernobyl just terrified me when it occurred. I was about 15 at the time, 1986, right. and it was actually one of the main, when I changed my mind about nuclear, what really changed it was when I went and read the actual science about Chernobyl from the World Health Organization, the United Nations has done many studies. And the first thing you discover when you read the science is just how few people died. So three people were killed in the fire, the night, in the fire and the explosion the night of the accident. And then 28 firefighters died several weeks later from acute radiation syndrome. Although one of the most interesting findings when you read the material is that it's not clear how many of the firefighters died from acute radiation syndrome and how many of, of them may have died just from being burned from exposure to the fire? Um, they may have survived if they hadn't, had, uh, ha- hadn't been burned by the fire as well because that opened up their immune systems to uh, made them more vulnerable um, to acute radiation syndrome. And then after that, all we know is that there will be an estimated 16,000 cases of thyroid cancer and while that may sound like a lot, the mortality rate from thyroid cancer is about 1%. So very few people die from it. It's easy to treat. So that brings you to about 160 deaths over an 80-year lifetime. Um, so you're looking at something around 200 deaths total, which is just, I mean, in any comparison to anything is nothing. I mean, we estimate that somewhere around 7 million people die every year from ordinary air pollution, smoke, not just fossil fuels, but burning wood and dung in poor countries. You know, the number of deaths from people looking at their smartphones while walking or driving in their car, it appears to be somewhere around 4,000. In fact, the death rate from pedestrian deaths and automobile accidents has gone up. That's just annually in the United States. So, I mean, 200 deaths total... And meanwhile, no deaths from radiation from Three Mile Island, no deaths from radiation from Fukushima. It turns out that nuclear is not only the safest way to make electricity, it's literally one of the safest technologies in our society. I mean, it's so shocking. It, it's so sh- sort of so shocking, it's understandable that nobody believes it, because when you watch the a- HBO special, you think that thousands of people must have died, and the reality is just very different from that. <laughs> 